Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and this is your first time here. Welcome to Books and Busy. So today is going to be my very, very late mid-year book freakout tag. So I have not prepared any of my answers. I do have a general idea of some of them, but I haven't like made a stack of books. So we're just going to go over. We're kind of going to just figure it out together because it hasn't been the best reading year. So I mean, how many of them really stand out? So let's just start from the top with the big banger. Uh, what is the best book you've read so far in 2020 and this is actually an easy one the best book that i have read this year has been ruin by john glenn which is book three in the faithful and the following Woo! this is my favorite book in the series obviously because my favorite book of the year i do believe this is the longest one in the series it is like 760 pages this book was a banger a showstopper a chart topper from beginning to end um so the faith in the fallen the first book is malice and this is an epic tale of good versus evil and i can't tell you anything about what happens in here because i will spoil the first two books but all i can say is i cried so much there were so many moments that we have been building up to in the series that we got in here this book has one of the single best one-to-one -one combat scenes i have ever read probably actually the best i've ever read it was so emotional it was so fraught with tension uh but there were so many like slow heartwarming moments and just the relationships between these characters the care and detail john went put into telling each of their stories and having them do things that are true to themselves but even some of the things that hurt this book fantastic 10 out of 10 recommend all right so number two, um, I, I do have, so that's my favorite fantasy book. I do have another, like a, a secondary favorite that's not fantasy, but I'll talk about that one in another question. So the best sequel you've read in 2021. Um, I want to obviously go with like The Faithful and the Fallen because, you know, but I'm actually, I don't own this book physically, unfortunately, but I'm going to go with night's shadow by sebastian dickassel the second book in the great coast series this book like traders late was good it, i enjoyed it but this book was so good i had to lower my rating from traders late from a five star to a four star because i'm like this is a five star this book has one of the single best i think my favorite torture scene that i've ever read and i love a good torture scene so uh the great coats the first book is trade display and this is about uh this group of men called the great coats but we follow three of them we follow kest Falcio and Brasti and Falcio Valmon is our main character and he is the first character of the King's Great Coast. He's like the number one Great Coast. And in this world, five years ago, the dukes of this land, I think it's Tristia? I think Dukes of Tristia, I think, overthrew the king, murdered him, put his head on a pike. But the king, they were coming, so they organized like a peace treaty. And in it, the Great Coast would be disbanded, but they would be safe. And uh, in that, he gave each of them a mission. So for the last five years, they've been riding out, trying to find the Great Coast. They've been trying to fulfill the missions of the king and his whims. And we start the story where they are being hired as like bodyguards and some of them work as mercenaries and it's really much three musketeers as it has like the sweetest found family and friend group like the bond between fit Cal falcio Kess, and brassy is just so beautiful it is so fun to watch it is just it's, it's a joy and i truly love the audiobook and this one we the tension ramps up so much like this book is equal parts very funny but it's filled with action it's very like a swashbuckling adventure it's like the pirates of the caribbean in a book that's definitely how i would describe it um really enjoyed that one so easily the best sequel i've read the next one is a new release you haven't read yet but you want to um let's see what's the new release honey that i haven't read that i want to okay let's talk about this one um the unbroken by c.l clark is a book that came out in march oh i haven't gotten to it it was a one of the most anticipated releases and it's about it's sapphic and it's about this girl named terrain who is a conscript in his army and she has been hired essentially to quell a revolution and to put down her people because she is like them but she was taken from her family when she was young and has been raised up in this army and so terrain is a soldier and luca is royalty and luca needs a turncoat and i know there's a relationship that bond that develops between the two of them that could be kind of sketchy because obviously it's colonizer and the colonized but i've heard really great things about this book and i always want to support black women authors so also sapphic stories with 
biceps like this definitely um all right up my alley let's see next one is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year this one is easily jay legacy by fonda lee the third book in the green bone saga uh jay legacy is one of my favorite books that i read last year and uh, i'm really excited to see how the story anthem worked for my baby Hilo. and i know that there's lots of time jumps in that book and things like that and so i'm just ready to to read it but i don't know if i'm i'm ready to read it but i don't know if i'm ready to read it uh and so the green ball saga is this world of an analog of 1970s asia and we follow these characters who are the leaders of the no peak clan in society the no peak clan and the mountain clan they kind of rule the jade market and they have this bioenergetic jade on this island called kekon that uh with proper training allows you some superhuman-esque abilities i would say uh to move faster to fight harder to do a, a number of things and they have control of the jade in this area and they are at war essentially uh, and they have had lots of tension between them and we it's really a character study of these characters we follow we follow uh, a family the call family specifically we follow the horn of the family which is hilo my favorite character we follow shay who is a uh dish mm, a daughter who's fallen into disgrace and who's coming back to uh coming back to the story we follow andon who is a young son of the family who is finishing up his training to be a green ball and then we follow the pillar of the clan who's the leader of the clan lan and this story is is full of action it's full of heart owing moments it's a really interesting romance uh and i highly recommend that one next question we've got is the biggest disappointment of the year child i have so many i could literally give y'all a video on my most disappointing books of the year so far but this isn't that video but i have to give that title to the poppy war by rf kwong this is my most disappointing book series all that this was a five-star prediction for me i just knew this was going to be like my new favorite book new favorite series new favorite author like everything and unfortunately it was not I will say that the beginning of this I enjoyed so much and the beginning is the part that people say is the weakest uh when we're at the school saying when Rain is working towards getting into the school all that but I loved it like it was that beginning part was like stay up late you're not gonna be at work in the morning good and then we left the school setting and it just went downhill and I've also read the Dragon Republic and that was even more disappointing so I gave them three stars because I did really really enjoy the beginning and I was hoping that maybe uh with the ending of this book where that left off that maybe the things that I enjoyed about the first half would present themselves in the sequel and they did not uh so that's how it if you're unfamiliar this is a story about this girl named Ren who um is an orphan and she uh, has been tasked to get married basically and she doesn't want that so she decides that she's going to test into the synagogue which is the only school she could get into because it's expensive enough and high tier enough that she wouldn't have to pay because they pay for all the students and she does that to get out of out of this marriage she gets in and she's dark-skinned and uneducated in the ways of the world or whatever so she's treated really poorly and we watch her as she learns about war and the various things that go on and like the history of their war and a lot of lore as well and at some point a war breaks out and so we get we trans there's a transition from the theory of war into more the application of war and how ren fits into that puzzle and yeah so that's the poppy war it's so disappointing i still just and it's also very forgettable very forgettable i read it not even two months ago and i i couldn't tell you half the things that happened in that book now uh biggest surprise the biggest surprise what book surprised me because what surprised me is I, I wasn't look, expecting to like it and then i did you know what i know to sleep in a csr by christopher paolini i knew this had a beautiful cover and i knew that monty liked it but i have been putting this off for months because i got it on release day it was a pre-order and i just thought it was beautiful but in the premise sound interesting because I wanted to get into more sci-fi and I uh, was excited about the concept of first contact with aliens and the premise of this and again this cover. But I was just like it's very long and I'm just like I don't know if I'm gonna like it. I just don't think I'm gonna like it. So I just put it off for months and months and months. And then finally in February this is my Patreon book and then I read it and like I was obsessed with this book. I read it in like a day and a half and 
it was so crazy because I was reading it physically and then I couldn't read physically uh, the book because of my backpack. So I was reading the ebook on my phone. Then I was at the store and I couldn't read the ebook because I listened to the audiobook because I just did not want to be separated from the story. The plot in here is so interesting. The world building is so rich. The aliens in here are like my favorite aliens ever. Um, and the action is so good and it's so interesting. I'm just so excited to see where the fractal verse goes. I have an entire dedicated review to this book, which I will leave link link down below, which tells you how much I enjoyed it. I did a whole review for it. Uh and I have several book looks that I've also done for this book. But I really enjoyed this one. I was not expecting this to be a five star read, to be a new favorite sci-fi, be one of my new brand books that like people associate this book with me and me with this book. So really enjoyed this one. I will say I've seen a lot of people have a lot of mixed reviews about this book uh but i loved it so the next one let's see we've got favorite new author debut or new to you now baby that's easy let's zoom in shall we john gwen so this year I have read five John Gwynn books. I have read the entirety of The Faithful and the Fallen, and I have read Shadow of the Gods, and I also had an interview with him, just because, listen, that interview was for me. I was so pressed to know what was going on in that story and that world was next. I had to get him on the channel to discuss. So, uh, I am so excited to read the sequel series to Faithful and the Fallen, which is uh, A Blood and Bone, but I'm putting it off because I'm like, I know when I start, I'm going to like run through it like water. And once I've done that, I will have nothing else. I've read everything it's written um, until, you know, book two and Bloodsworn comes out. But John Gwynn destroyed me. This man made me scream. He made me cry. He made me so attached to people I've never met. Like the words that he wrote on a page took me through all types of emotional lows and highs. And I'm so invested in The Faithful and the Fallen has become one of my favorite, if not my favorite series. And it just the characters how epic the world is i think this is the most epic series i've ever read just because of the sheer scope of how large it is and how large the world is and it just it was fantastic and he's so mad he's so amazing such a nice guy uh and i'm just i'm ready to continue on next one is newest fictional crush i don't have one of those sorry uh newest favorite character I'm gonna give you two because a I keep going back to malice because this has honestly been the series of the year for me so far so in this series I, my favorite character is like a, I'm gonna give you actually like a trio so we've got Corbin Storm and Gar Corbin is like this year's fits he's my little baby and Storm is his little wolf pup and Gar is like his mentor <gasps> I love them so much that trio I from the beginning I was so invested in them. they were my favorite POV um, because they were all in the same POV, obviously. And that continued to be the relationship that we follow and that we watch develop over the course of the series, the growth. And it's one of those series where uh, it takes us over a number of years. So our characters grow over four and five years. The series takes place over. And it is just a masterpiece. Like, I cried tears for Corbin. I cried tears for God. I was so invested in Storm. I'm like, I want a wolf pup now. Like, I, I really just want to reread it just because it was so good. But easily them. Also... My next favorite character, um, if you know, you know. So, because I almost had. But if you know, you know. Everybody's favorite character from this book, spoiler alert, it ain't him. But this character made me laugh, made me smile. I was just enjoyed what they brought to the story so much. They were just a joy to read about. And it's just one of my favorite portrayals of this type of relationship ever so i want to be vague because i don't want to spoil but if you've read it you know exactly what i'm talking about um a book that made you cry now i mentioned this book earlier when i talked about how there was a, a book that was a non-fantasy book that was my favorite well i decided to save it for this question a book that made me cry boom people we meet on vacation by emily henry i cried ugly tears reading this book like hideous tears cried on camera like gushed about this book for 10 minutes straight because i felt so seen in this book I, it made me want things for my life and for myself it is like emily henry walked into my mind and like pulled some scenes out and pulled some emotions out and it has a lot of the struggles of of 
of you know not a midlife crisis but like a quarter life crisis and like change and how how we adapt to change and how what we want for our lives and how those things change and this i would leave a link to the vlog and i would even timestamp where you can hear me go in detail about this book but i cried several times several times and some of those were happy tears some of them were like earth shattering soul crushing tears but overall this is a beautiful beautiful book and i absolutely loved it five out of five this is my new favorite romance it has booted the kiss quotient um i love this book so much emily henry is an autobiography for me i cannot wait to see what she brings out next this book is fantastic in this book it is a friends to lovers romance and we follow poppy and alex who have been best friends for 12 years and they met in college and every year they started a certain tradition of going on a summer vacation and it started when they were going on the cheap and then poppy is now a tra uh, you know experienced travel vlogger and she can go on these luxury trips and then two years ago we don't know what happened but they something happened they haven't been on vacation since and they haven't really spoken much and poppy decides she's going to give it one last go and try to rekindle their friendship and this is a beautiful book beautiful 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 i think if you don't even read romance you would like this book i think if you didn't like beach read i definitely say pick this one up because it's very different and i see a lot of people who didn't like beach read still love this one i love them both but i think i love this one a little bit more all right next a book that made you happy a book that made me happy do books do that i would see i want to say um i'm actually going to talk about project hail mary again because it did make me very happy i laughed i smiled so much reading this it was just so fun it was so fast paced like i honestly would describe this as cozy sci-fi because it just feels so good when you read it um you just you laugh you smile you're rooting for you're rooting for them you're rooting for all the things that happen and it just feels good like even with the, the, the science and the math like, it really feels good to read it uh and then if i was to say about another book that made me happy uh obviously the great coast made me really happy because i just i laughed and it was just a lot of joy in that reading but there's another book where is it child oh my knees my knees my knees my knees um i cannot seem to put my eyes on the book but the book that i'm talking about is skyward by brandon sanderson which i read and enjoyed quite a bit made me smile a lot skyward and star sight really i'm still looking around because i would like to find it rather than like edited in since i do own it but i really enjoyed that book it made me smile quite a bit next one the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received uh so for beautiful book that i bought give me one second all right so the most beautiful book that i have bought with my own money is six crimson cranes by elizabeth Lim. like this beautiful art is actually done all in color pencil like this is stunning I know a lot of people have been answering this one with um, the ones I'm meant to find, which is also beautiful, but Six Crimson Crying just does a little bit more for me. The most beautiful book I've received is this edition of Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is from Fairy Loot. So it has this beautiful golden snake spine, this beautiful sprayed and stenciled edges, this lovely mustard color, marble end papers, Medusa head. And this beautiful art on the inside. So the second runner for this one will be the Fairy Loot Edition of Which is Deep in Gold. But that's buried under some more books that I just refuse to grab. So what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Literally my whole um, 2021 TBR. But there are two specifically that I'm like, you know what? If I don't read these books, I'm quitting book two. If I don't read these by the end of the year, these three, I want to quit book two. The first is going to be Malazan, uh, book, of, book one of Malazan, Book of the Fallen, which is Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson. This is a grim, dark fantasy series. Uh, and it's an epic, it's a 10 book. I think it's considered one of the most epic fantasies ever. Uh, with books this long and series this long, it's very difficult to describe. But just know that one. The next one is actually 
Game of Thrones because no one can be can't believe that I've read this. I haven't read this already, but Game of Thrones, book one, Game of Thrones, which is the first book in Song of Ice and Fire. You all know what this is about because either you watch the show or you at least have heard about it. And last but not least, and the one like if I don't read these other two, fine. But if I don't read this one, Book Then Busy is is done for. The Way of Kings, and I'm pretty sure this is my answer last year, which is why like this time I'm like I mean business. Uh, Way of Kings, the first book in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, an epic fantasy series about these two kingdoms that are at war with each other because one orchestrated the murder of the other's king. Can all know about that one? So, I think is that it? Uh, this one says my favorite book to movie adaptation. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. It's gonna be a uh, manga to TV adaptation or anime, and that is gonna be High Q. If you were around in June, you would know High Q kind of took over my life, and I absolutely adored it. Uh, I started reading the manga and I was like, wait, let me see if it's a show. Watch the show and I was like, I love volleyball now. I'm obsessed. Uh, and it's just, it's so good. It's so heartwarming. It made me so happy from the subs, the dub to whatever. And now I'm just waiting on the manga, the, um, the anime to catch up with the manga. But it's just such a wholesome story. And there's so much hope and there's so much teamwork and, and friendship and just striving. And it's very simple and very easy to consume, which is something that I, I enjoy. Uh, and it just made me very, 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 very happy. Uh, so if you have not watched Haikyuu, I highly recommend it. And I actually recommend the English uh dub because it's just so fun like that ex the excitement is there and then obviously once the english show runs out after the third season it just switches itself but the dub i highly recommend because it's so good and that is the last question uh, i hope you all have enjoyed this video uh, i know i'm hella late like always but if you have made it to the end of this video, leave a snake emoji for Laura, the most beautiful book I've received this year. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.